I've helped collectors buy and sell millions in rare collectibles. The sale prices in this video are all backed by real data from top auction houses like Heritage. I know what makes coins and currency valuable and today I'll break it down for you. In this video, we are going over some incredibly rare bicentennial quarters. Now these quarters were produced to celebrate the 200th anniversary of George Washington. When they first started making these coins, they actually didn't produce enough of them. People were hoarding them and the prices went up quite a bit. One once the US Mint got wind of this, they produced these to oblivion. They produced so, so many of these coins that the value dropped significantly. Now the coins we go over in this video are ones that you want to be looking out for because they can be very rare. Now I'm all about being straightforward with you guys. There is a high probability that the coins you have are probably not rare, but in the off chance you come across a rare coin, you must know what to look for and how to maximize the value of your coin. So let's start off with this 1976 bison centennial coin. It is a Denver minted coin. So on the front bottom right area of the coin, you see a D mint mark. Now this coin was graded by PCGS at a mint state 67 plus. So this is a very highly graded coin by PCGS. This coin is three points away from the perfect grade of 70. On top of that, you have a plus sign after the grade, which seems kind of silly. But in this particular instance, that means that the grader was looking at the coin and they said, hey, this example of this coin is very, very nicely conditioned. It's just a really good piece for what it is. And sometimes the grader will give it the plus sign. Now it seems silly, but that does increase the value of the coin quite significantly. Someone was able to turn this quarter into 336 bucks. 1,740 bucks for this 1976D 25 cent bicentennial coin. Now this is a clad coin, which means it's comprised of 75% copper and 25% nickel. These coins do weigh 5.67 grams. So do keep that in mind. Now there were over 860 million of these coins produced, and there's only six examples that have qualified for the Mint State 68 grade by NGC. So put that into perspective of just how challenging it is to get this high of a grade for this coin. But because it got graded this highly and it sold an auction, it was able to sell for 1,740 bucks. This is a pretty unique coin. So it is a 1976 S mint marked coin. So a few things going on here. First of all, the S mint mark stands for the San Francisco Mint. Now, San Francisco is a mint that typically produces more proof coins than others, especially in more modern times. So proof coins are distinguished by their unique characteristics and the field and backdrop of this coin is going to be like a mirror on these proof coins. What makes these so rare and valuable is the fact that they are done one by one. They are hand done by mint employees to make sure that the quality is exactly what they want it to be. Now, in today's day and age, proof coins are sold by the US Mint to the public just to show some really great examples of what the coins look like and I'm sure it is a great business model for the US government just making tons of money. Either way, what's really interesting about this coin is the fact that it was accidentally struck on a five cent planchet. That means that the piece of metal the coin was struck on was meant to go on a Jefferson nickel but accidentally a Washington quarter was struck on it. That's why if you're looking at Liberty at the top there it looks a bit cut off. The coin just looks way too small for what it should be. If you got a coin like this, make sure you hold on to it tightly because this beauty sold for 4,080 bucks. $8,400 for this 1976 D 25 cent bicentennial quarter. This one got graded by PCGS at a mint state 66. So if you're still watching, then good on you because I'm going to show you something on this coin that is really, really cool. So guys, just to tell you, the front of the coin is called the obverse and the back of the coin is called the reverse. So this is called a doubled die obverse coin. So the front of the coin or the obverse was accidentally doubled doubled. The die had doubling, causing this appearance. Now, doubling can come either obvious or not so obvious, depending on the type of doubling that happened on the coin. Now, areas to look for doubling is typically Liberty at the top, In God We Trust at the bottom left, and the dates along the bottom, and sometimes the mint mark. Those are areas you want to be looking for doubling. Now, these coins are relatively small, and the older we get, sometimes the harder it is to see these doubling. Now, the best thing that you could do is get a USB microscope or a 10x magnifying glass to look for doubling on your coin. Now, it may be a bit better on your shoulders and your neck area just to get a USB microscope. That'll save you some time and effort just to be looking for this doubling happening on the coins. But because this coin got graded by PCGS at a mint state 66 and you have that DDO or double die obverse, this coin sold for $8,400. Wow, check out this monstrosity. Holy cow, this bicentennial quarter was accidentally struck on a 1976 10 cent Roosevelt dime. What in the world? This thing is crazy. PCGS graded this coin at a mint state of 66. 
2. Now, if your coin is graded by PCGS or NGC, that can nearly guarantee you that the coin is indeed legitimate and genuine. Now, however this coin actually happened during the minting process is a whole different story. Whether that was done intentionally or not, we may never know outside of the person who did this, or if it was an accident, who knows, like I said. The point is, these coins are selling for a lot of money regardless of how they actually occurred. You know, there could be some mint employee throwing these in the hoppers, getting them struck, and then pocketing them for years down the line, and then making tons of money. Who knows exactly? Either way, super cool, super valuable, this coin sold for $9,000. So if you have any of the coins that you've seen in this video, this is what you're going to want to do. First of all, if you want to learn more and increase your knowledge and make sure you don't get scammed or ripped off, I have nothing to sell you at all. But I do have a completely free coin and currency book down below. You learn coin and currency handling, grading, and values from that book. It is completely free. Now, once you read over the book, you can keep it, you can download it, you can print it out, do whatever you want with it. But once you have that book and you've read it, this is what I would do next. Find a coin and currency expert, depending on what you got. Find at least three of them, go to them, see what your coin is worth. Now listen, if they all tell you the same thing, then they're likely telling you the truth. You don't need to tell them that they're a scammer or anything like that. Most coin shop owners are relatively good people, but you know, they may have a new employee that doesn't know what they're doing, or maybe they're having an off day or they forgot or something like that. What you need to know is that if you get the opinion of at least three different coin shops and they all tell you something, they're probably telling you the truth. That way you can maximize the value of your coin. Guys, stay safe out there. Never bring your coin or currency to a pawn shop because you will get ripped off. I can guarantee you that. Be very careful out there, guys. Stay safe. Get your free coin and currency book down below, and we'll see you in the next video.